Nick Lee here with Pragmatic Works, and welcome to today's edition of Nick's Power BI Tricks. Today we're going to be talking about DAX. Now, I love DAX. I've been writing DAX for many years now. It's one of my favorite aspects of Power BI and one of my favorite aspects of working in the business intelligence space to begin with. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Before we begin, want to learn more about Power BI? Visit prag.work slash nick40 and you'll get a 40% discount on an annual on-demand learning subscription and you'll get access to over 100 courses. Now onto the video. What we're talking about is tips and tricks to make you writing DAX easier on your day-to-day basis. This isn't about how to write DAX. This isn't about how DAX works or how filter context works or how uh, row context works. There's a lot of videos out there on this. But what this video is about is how can we make writing DAX easier for you? As you can see on screen, I have a few measures already up on screen just for display purposes. But let's go ahead and add another one to kind of get started on these little tricks here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and zoom into Fact Internet Sales. I'm going to right click on it and select New Measure. So when I create a new measure, I run into my first problem. My first problem is, is this measure bar is pretty small. And depending on how large your screen is, it could look even smaller. So it's really bad for your eyes, especially if you're someone like me who stares at my computer all day and night long to, to really have to, to get in close to my monitor and squint and look real hard at it to try to understand what it says. I'll show you guys a little trick here is you can actually make this whole font of this whole formula bar bigger for your entire Power BI report. Simply, all you have to do is make sure you select it inside the formula bar, hold the control key, and scroll your mouse wheel up. Think already much better. Next thing is, is let's take a look at and write our first measure and get into our next tip. So I am going to write a measure here. And the measure I want to write is say, let's say I want to return the max sale price for my product color, for my products per color. Okay, so let's look at max sale price. And this is gonna end up being per color because that's what our context is saying here. So just out of habit, I'm going to hit shift enter, go down to the next line and start writing my function. <clears throat> so the function I wanna use is max, simple enough. So I'm gonna write M-A-X. So, one thing to keep in mind here is when you're writing functions, you always want to use the tab key because and also make sure that if a parenthesis is required, it will include that parenthesis. So I'm going to go ahead and hit tab and it looks great. All right. First issue on another tip that comes up. This is really annoying sometimes when you hit tab on a function and a whole new kind of drop down pop up is populating because it's saying, hey, what other function do you want to use? Well, I don't want to use another function. So my next tip here is whenever you see any extra drop downs that you don't want and you want to keep writing and you need to see what's behind this box is because I could keep writing here. I could keep putting in information like, you know, I could start referencing my tables and whatnot and get rid of that. But let's say I want to see what's behind this box to know what I'm supposed to write. Well, you could simply hit the escape key. Now that box goes away. Now that we have our max function in place and that window's out of our way, let's take a look at what happens next. Well, there's still kind of another problem here. When you're looking at the IntelliSense pop-up that is telling us what to do after a function, you notice that all the text here is bigger as well. So if we hover over that box, you can see it has little scrolly bars on it. We can scroll and look left and right and down and see exactly what it is we want to do. Now, I wish I could put my mouse on the edge of this and drag it to make it bigger, but currently, that's not a functionality when you're looking at the IntelliSense pop-up of what you're supposed to do in the function. But we can scroll and still read it and see exactly what the max function does and what it wants us to do. All right, so the next thing. Whenever I want to reference a column in a table when I'm writing a measure, you always want to reference the table name first. Now, this is the best practice. I always do it, and it makes my life so much easier when writing DAX. Uh, because when you're referencing a specific column, if you reference the table first, it's always going to return that column. It's not going to return some other measure. It's not going to return some other variable. It's always going to return that column. So watch what happens when I write single quote, just one singular single quote. It pops up all potential tables that I could reference. 
Because it's referencing all potential tables I could reference, I could easily find the fact internet sales. So I'm going to look at that. I'm going to hit the F key. Fact internet sales popped up quick. But I also really want to reference a column in this table now, right? Well, it's kind of hard to see what column I'm looking for. We'll get back to that in just one moment. But I'll give you another tip. Instead of having to look at each table name when you're going to reference a column, as long as you have a single quote, instead of actually putting that whole table name, the DAX engine is automatically going to know you're going to want to reference a column or a table when you put that single quote. But in our case, we want to reference a whole column. So instead of writing the table name first, I'm actually going to put the, start writing the column name. And that column name I'm looking for is sales amount. So if I put a single quote to say I want a table, and then I start writing a column name, S-A-L-E-S-A. -E -S Notice that it's really referenced it, or it's really um, combined all these fields and filtered down to exactly what I'm looking for that has sales A in it, in the column name. Here's another issue is this, this window, I can't see what it says either, but there's nowhere to scroll down. But on this one, when you're actually referencing a column, you can grab the little gray box and drag it up if, if you're ever out of space. That's very, very helpful. So now I know I'm selected the right column that I'm looking for. I can hit tab, auto fill it. That's all I want here. I don't want to add any other parameters to my max function. I could close the parentheses, hit enter. Now, once I've hit enter, I can add this max sale price to my table visual. And I can see what the max sale price per color of my products are. Next thing we're going to look at is actually a measure I've already created. I'm going to look at one of the measures that's actually currently on screen. And I'm going to go and check out my total sales, not USA measure. This is, this is a measure I created ahead of time. Um, so we could talk about it a little bit. So... As many of you may know, or probably know if you're familiar with writing programming languages, there are ways to comment out code. What this comment does is it allows you to say, hey, I don't want to use it, or hey, I want to just add some text here. It's a great best practice to add text to explain what you're doing. For instance, you can write a something like, this is total sales, not USA, so I want to give a little explanation of what it is. So in DAX, there's two ways to do it. The first way is do double forward slash. Notice that this text is now green and say, I want to do a, I'm just explaining that this is a sum of all sales that are not in the USA. That's just a little descriptor in case someone else wants to see what uh, this measure does if you never needed it. Also, you could do a dash dash if you are a SQL user. Uh, you are used to using the dash dash. It does the same thing. Some of all sales that are not in the USA. Simple way just to comment your code and add some descriptive elements. There are other use cases for commenting your code though. Let's take a look at those. Let's say, all right, this measure looks good. I, I think it's working, uh, but let's just say I want to do a little bit of debugging or testing, see if anything's going on and what happens. Let's say I want to do this measure by only looking at total sales. Well, I could do that by commenting my code. I could do forward slash forward slash commenting out this comma. But notice how the next line is now saying give me an error because it needs to be written uh, with a comma first. So I could also comment out this section of code. And that looks great. So now that that's done, I hit enter. My total sales not USA, I expect it to match my regular total sales which it seems to do perfectly. That's what you'd expect. We're just looking at the total sales measure is essentially what's happening here. All right, let's say I'm done commenting this or when, a lot of times when you comment code, you separate it by line and you could do so um, by hitting shift enter by separating by line. And let's say, all right, well, I'm done commenting this code. Well, I could actually, instead of deleting each one of these double forward slashes, I could actually hit control forward slash. Now, it just deleted both of them. You could actually do that by also adding commas to multiple lines. You can highlight any number of rows you want and hit control forward slash and it highlights them. And I could hit control forward slash and it unhighlights them. 
So that's a really useful way to manage commenting your code or debugging or anything like that is being able to do it line by line. Another trick though is let's say I have a couple of lines commented already. So those two lines I already have commented. And let's say, all right, you know what? I want to do another test here. I want to do another test, like just say, I just return total sales without the calculate as an example. Well, notice I saw that let me write it. So what I need to do is comment the rest of my code. Okay, so I'm just going to comment the rest of my code too. I hit control forward slash. All right, there we go. It's all commented. Okay, but now, now that it's all commented, I can do my total sales measure and expect to see the same exact values. And if I look at it, total sales, not USA, making it total sales. Notice that once again, exactly the same. So nothing ended up changing. That looks good. So now I could comment this one out by hitting control forward slash. And I can now um, uncomment these by control forward slash. But wait, I hit control forward slash and it didn't remove these other comments. Well, they're on other lines. Notice how if I hit control forward slash, it's either comment everything or uncomment everything. Well, if you have a situation where you have multiple lines, some are commented, some are uncommented, there's actually another hotkey you can use to uncomment stuff that is separated like this, if you want. And it's actually a little bit more of a complex and less unintuitive, or so less intuitive rather, I should say. Um, so what that keystroke combination is, is control K, the letter K, and then U for uncomment. Control K and the letter U for uncomment. There's some use cases where I actually use that, you know, examples like this, just so I don't have to keep clicking. I like to do use my keyboard shortcuts as much as possible. Control, if you didn't want to use control forward slash for whatever reason to comment stuff, you can also do control K C. Now, like I said, the only difference is that if you are highlighting multiple lines and you want to comment or uncomment um, things that are separated, control forward slash is just a blanket comment everything or uncomment everything and it doesn't actually do any type of separation whereas control ku actually does just uncomment so if there is anything to uncomment it will uncomment only those things so that's pretty nice now the last thing i want to show is actually a way you can write on multiple lines at the same time now this could be useful for a multitude of reasons Let's say you're using a switch statement and doing conditional logic and you're like, hey, I don't want to write the same logic 20 times for saying when month equals February 2, where month equals March 3, where month equals April 4, so on and so forth. And you just want to start writing a bunch of that at once. Well, you actually can do that instead of having to copy and paste or whatever. You can all write it all at once if you want to. And this example this is just an example. I'm going to show it just with the commenting aspect that we just talked about. Um, but keep in mind that this could work for a multitude of reasons. And if you ever, if you ever want to write on uh, several lines at the same time, you can notice my cursor is on line four. I can hold control and alt and I can hit the down arrow. Now the cursor you can see is on two lines. And when I start writing, I could write forward slash forward slash. Again, just an example. I could write, Nick is a really cool guy. And it works on multiple lines. So if you ever want to work on multiple lines, easy way to do it right there. Also, typical keyboard shortcut that I use all the time is just holding control and hitting backspace. And notice it deletes a whole line or a whole word at a time. And it makes it a lot easier than having to just hold backspace and down the row. That's another little keyboard shortcut that I like to use. I hope you enjoyed my little tips and tricks for writing in DAX today. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, I use these little tiny tips all the time, all day long, every day. It makes my life easier. Was it anything huge or mind-blowing? No, it wasn't. But the more you get a little bit of quality of life, each little bit matters, makes your day-to-day -day a little bit easier gives your wrists a break or just overall speeds you up because you have all these shortcuts at your disposal that you don't have to manually write so much or manually delete so much or whatever it be whatever it may be so if you enjoyed this video make sure you are liked and you like the video make sure you subscribe to the pragmatic works channel 
Also, Pragmatic Works does all kinds of private training. We have uh, virtual mentoring. We have boot camps. We have classes. We have so much stuff. Be sure to just check out the website I have. I guarantee you we have more than you could possibly imagine as far as training goes. So I'll let you know I have my own special code to give you a discount. And my own special code is NICK40. N-I-C-K-40. Get 40% off on a multitude of products. Make sure you check it out. There's also going to be information in the description about it. What we did today was just a simple tips, simple tricks, but we have all kinds of depth to go through in the future. Thanks for watching. See you next time.